I am uh, here again to introduce to you former Representative Denny, Denny Delwo. I was fortunate to first meet Denny when I was just a kid, uh, not really a kid, but I was a young adult doing an internship in the state Senate. And he was a representative who happened to be the majority whip. And he happened to be chair or on the committee for the health care committee. And he was on the rules committee, two key pivotal committees that was important because he was also um, part of the group of people who pushed and created the pilot project for our basic health plan. So with that, I'd like to introduce to you representative, former representative Denny Delwo of Spokane. Well, thank you very much, Cindy. We've gotten everybody here. It's good to see you all. And uh, it's a real honor to be introducing uh, Marcus Riccelli, the representative from the third district. As Cindy and I were talking about before, um, I'm from the same district originally and was honored to represent the third district and also honored to be a majority whip and a member of the rules committee and the transportation committee, healthcare committee and chairman of the, of the uh, banking and insurance committee. And then much to my surprise, I was chosen to be uh, the head of the healthcare committee, house healthcare committee. So representative Riccelli, you're going to discover that they have put you in these positions with a plan. When the position opens up as chairperson of the healthcare committee, you will be appointed. They train you this way. And so uh, you do a wonderful job. Eileen Cody is too, but I think eventually she's going to want to get out of that position and you would do very well there. But uh, I wanted to introduce you as the person that has not only the training, working on campaigns, working with senators from the United States Congress, as well as uh, the majority leader, Lisa Brown, Senator Lisa Brown in the uh, Washington State Senate, but also someone who has worked personally in the community providing food, help to the people during the COVID, COVID during the virus, and has just played a very important part helping people that desperately need that. You are the kind of person, the person that we would love to see, not only representing us in the third district, but also on the healthcare committee advocating uh, the universal health care bill that it takes someone with a lot of knowledge, a lot of strength to be able to get through. And so with that, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, you are now muted and hopefully you'll be unmuted and, and be able to give us an introduction to what you promise us in the House of Representatives this coming year. Well, thank you, uh, Denny. And uh, looks like uh, I'm slated for a, a lot of good things if I start looking at the similarities in our career, majority whip, <laughs> healthcare committee rules, transportation. Uh, anyway, um, thank you for that kind introduction. Um, I'm excited to chat with you all. I'm excited to, to be here just to thank you for all the work you have done and you continue to do um, to make sure that we're providing access to quality, affordable healthcare to every Washingtonian. And I really think we can be a catalyst for the rest of the country, but that largely falls uh, in gratitude to so many who are passionate about this issue and do the work day in and day out, session after session to keep moving this forward. Um, I, I'd love to chat with you about um, a number of things, uh, but I know you're kind of interested in the outlook of session. Um, one, it'll be a different kind of session. Um, I think one of the real strong points for, for this movement is the uh, grassroots connectivity to legislators and uh, policymakers uh, as constituents and as advocates. And I think that will be different this year. The House at this point is moving to a largely remote session. That's good for me um, from a public health standpoint. Uh, and uh, I also think it could open up some new opportunities with remote testimony. A lot of folks from Eastern Washington as they try and uh, uh, get involved you have to give up a, a day or two of work. Sometimes that passes closed down. So I'm really excited about the opportunity for more folks to be involved uh, uh, through remote testimony, but it will cause challenges in how we do our work. Um, hopefully we're adapting. These types of uh, uh, opportunities to link via technology are important, but it's also creating a, a gap. And that's something that I'd like to chat about a little bit um, later some of the priorities I'm working, including uh, closing the digital equity gap, because I think it's absolutely essential for healthcare and education and job creation. 
But as we, um, you know, my personal views of the importance of fund of uh, publicly funded universal health care um, are, are pretty straight up. Uh, I've been an advocate. I didn't have much of a health care background before I came to the legislature. Um, since then, I knew that, that I've, I've been on the health care committee uh, for eight years now. Um, I have worked with the community in Spokane, particularly. We've banked a lot of our future on the healthcare uh, sector, uh, but particularly I represent one of the poorest communities in the state and healthcare access is, is essential. Since then, um, you know, I've spent the last four and a half years working for one of our community health clinics as a project manager. Um, and I've moved to a different role there too. Um, for those of you on the West side, similar to like an ICHS or a CMAR where we see um, a largely Medicaid population. And um, uh, I just think it's absolutely essential that we continue to move the ball forward. Um, I think we need to deliver on a big change, but we're facing budget cuts and potential budget uh, woes. And so really looking at how we can um, move to something that is more economic, makes more economical sense, particularly in a COVID pandemic. While with the announcements even today, it's likely more people will be uh, potentially struggling with um, jobs, et cetera, and we need to make sure that they have not just um, uh, employment, but access to health care um, and so they can be healthy. Uh, I, I would say I do not support any kind of cuts budget. I think we not only should we not be going backwards, this is absolutely the time that we should be going forward. We need to be looking at uh, revenue, progressive revenue opportunities. Um, I'm a House Majority Whip. Um, you know, and I know you all understand what it means to try and get to 50 and 25 uh, in both the House and the Senate. Um, I'm so pleased at the work that's been going on with the uh, Universal Healthcare Work Group. Uh, and I think that that will really help advise us and put us on a path forward. But we need that continued effort. We have a lot of new members in the House. I'm anxious for you all. Uh, to be communicating with them. I'm anxious for them. And by the way, I should say, this is <laughs> this is uh, a very talented class that's coming in. I mean, we have been just so lucky the last uh, few uh, election cycles to just get uh, more perspectives, more energy. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, but it will take education and the work that you'll do, not only that you did in the campaign side, um, but now uh, working uh, with them as elected officials as the policy pieces come forward. You know, I don't, I, I would really like to answer some questions. I think that's one of the opportunities um, these types of uh, engagements have just to really, um, I shoot I shoot from the hip. Uh, I'd love to just answer your questions, but I will say, I would ask for your help too when it comes to cuts, um, particularly uh, when we talk about healthcare too much, um, you know, we don't talk about oral health care. That's been a passion of mine and something that I've been working on. And right now, uh, one of the budget proposed budget cuts is to cut the adult dental Medicaid benefit. That would cut over a million people in Washington um, from getting that benefit. We know that without um, essential oral health care that people will have experienced more things like premature birth, heart disease and stroke, diabetes. I came to the oral health issue because of an amazing grassroots activist who um, actually talked about his bouts in and out of the emergency room. Uh, unfortunately, that person's not with us today. He died at 37 because um, largely from complications from oral health issues. Um, and nobody in Washingtonian should face that. Nobody uh, in this state, in this country should face that. And so that's one thing that I'm really laser focused on. Denny mentioned my work uh, with some of my colleagues on food security. If you can follow along, anytime we talk about food security, hashtag food is health to make sure that that's being embraced as a healthcare issue. And then finally, again, broadband, we have the chance we've seen there's huge inequities in how we have broadband and I serve on our state's telehealth collaborative. While it's not perfect, when we talk about behavior health, when we talk about um, ways that people connect, can connect and get access during COVID times, uh, when we talk about reducing transportation barriers, telehealth is one of the parts of the solution, but we know that we're we're not, uh, we're not where we need to be from, uh, for education or healthcare from a digital equity standpoint. So I hope that that was a little bit of what you were interested in hearing, but I think likely um, if we can have some exchange here, we might, uh, we might be able to get more on uh, point with some of the things you're interested in talk talking about. Thank you for the so opportunity. 
Absolutely. So thank you, Representative Richelli. One of the questions we had earlier that I had folks wait uh, until you were here, and this was about if you can expand a little bit on hopefully your bill um, 2910, uh, will be reintroduced. And of course, 2910 was a healthcare premium assistance bill. Um, and if you can talk a bit, little bit about that, and because that would really, that was a bill we really wanted to get on top of and push hard on that one. Yeah, thank you so much for bringing that up. I do think we need to look at um, a way we can raise revenue. It's a bill that has passed in other states. Um, I think that looking at this, also looking at Representative or Senator Robinson's bill on tax mm -hmm. on lives, covered. These are options to, to raise revenue. And for me, the likely place where I would push for those dollars to go is to directly connect them to things like public health, but also uh, a state subsidy um, to make healthcare more fit, affordable on our exchange. Um, we know that that group right above Medicaid from 138% of the federal poverty level to 200%, particularly, you know, they have deductibles that are very large. Um, it's not what I would call healthcare. You all know that as well, because this is what you're fighting for every day. Um, but if you have to pay a deductible of 7,000 or $7,500, that's not healthcare, okay? And so that's just, for me, that's just um, one of the ways that I think we can do it. Also, you know, it turns out insurance companies haven't been doing that bad. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that was definitely gets to one of, yeah, that definitely gets to June Robinson's bill, um, I believe. Uh, I think it was Robinson, but we also had a bill in the Senate that was um, uh, a fee a fee on excess profits by the insurance companies that are nonprofits. It yeah, it's on the their yeah, it was on their reserves. So it's not their yeah. reserves; it's their excess reserves. Which right. So the problem with that, and why I introduced the um, tax, Your bill. my bill um, particularly, was because I did talk with some of the insurance companies, including the nonprofits, who said, "Look, you know who gets hit? We only get hit. It's not distributed and shared." amongst some of those uh, much bigger insurance companies that are multi-state, the, the bigger companies. So I said, hey, this is something that will hit everybody equally. If you stand back, it would, in my opinion, be a more fair way to go after it. And so that's really um, was kind of the genesis of the bill. Um, and uh, what, you know, and I'm going to continue stakeholdering that. And I don't think I'll get to a point where um, these entities necessarily support something, but through conversations, um, you know, it might be the one that they uh, hate the hate the least. Um, and why is that important? Well, maybe it's not to get to our votes, but maybe if they're if they um, are willing to work with us a little bit and understand the purpose of revenue, we have a, a better path um, towards success. I can't tell you how it's going to end up. I just think the conversation is essential, and we're in a time when we absolutely need to be looking at how we can generate revenue to make healthcare more affordable. That's really great to hear. And that's, we're just gung ho to get behind you on, on getting your bill redone. Um, so one of the other questions we have is what gives you hope uh, in the time with the $4.4 billion budget deficit, what gives you hope um, in, with that and with, especially in the time of pandemic? Well, not to get too political, but democratic majorities in the house and Senate give me hope because I don't, and I think it's not just the quantity of members that matters, it's the quality. And I, mm -hmm strongly feel that um, the House Democrat Caucus and our, de and our Democrat colleagues in the Senate uh, will not stand for uh, a cuts budget. And um, that gives me hope. Uh, mm -hmm. There's this idea that we can uh, go backwards somehow in the time of most need has, does, uh, doesn't make sense. And I saw it as a staffer during the last recession. I worked for Senator uh, Lisa Brown when she was majority leader. And I saw the cuts that we were making yeah. um, TANF to um, again, adult, we cut, completely cut adult dental Medicaid benefit. You, for those of you in Spokane, like Denny, we cut programs like Sally's House that took care of our endangered children. Um, we just did so many things that just made people worse off. And I actually think for those who were around during that time, they very much still feel the pain of those decisions. So we have this great mix of progressive legislators and newer legislators that uh, will not stand for that. And you actually have... Um, progressive legislators that went through the last recession who still feel those battle scars and that pain. And we do not yeah. want to go backwards. That's great. So one of the things uh, that we talked about earlier um, was uh, about the University Healthcare Work Group. And some mm -hmm. of the great parts is there was an actuarial study done as a part of that work group. And the important part of that actuarial study is when it comes to 
we, the, the actual studies showed without a doubt that fully covering every person in the state of Washington uh, with universal health care would actually result in a savings of $2.7 billion um, in the first year. And that's, that's not all government spending, but that's total spending that's on health care. So, and then certainly, as I mentioned earlier, it goes up to $5.6 billion in subsequent years. So those are things that we're hoping that the legislature can really see as, as a bright spot. Would that, do you, you know, how do you think that's going to appeal? Because there's, there's four legislators on the work group and they certainly are, uh, seem very scared of, of making that kind of a big ask of moving forward. Yeah. One of the things it's hard to look in the crystal ball. There's so many changing parts right now. For instance, again, I think we're going to be operating in an environment that is um, different than we ever had, but I think that actually lends it to a, a lot of advantages as far as um, we have to be problem solvers. Um, I think we can't leave uh, with a cuts budget. And I think real solutions have to be on the table, but this is kind of that uh, figuring ways to have those conversations with legislators in this environment, whether it be, uh, you know, Zoom meetings, et cetera, and uh, putting something in front of them and really asking them, can we count on your support? That's what I do as, as WIP. And, um, you know, I think we need to go through that. And it's a one, it's a legislator and, and different legislators will have different issues, rationale for what they do support. Um, I do think as that's going on, I'm going to continue also though, I don't think it, my interest in seeing this policy move forward and my passion for it um, uh, does not discount continuing to work on things like providing subsidies on the exchange and all these other things. And so that is important to me as well. And I think to a lot of legislators to make sure that we're, we're, we're doing things right now that can make uh, healthcare more accessible and affordable, but we can do hard things. I think, you know, with the Biden presidency, we never know. And with redistricting coming up, we don't know what, things look like two years from now. And so I think there's a real um, obligation to try and uh, to, to really work on hard, difficult things. I think it is lim limited um, uh, this session because things will be very much scoped down, but I definitely think thing there is more room to entertain things in the healthcare realm because of COVID, because of the budget hole, and because, um, you know, are so many people are committed to seeing us do a much better job, a, a better, more efficient system, uh, a system that can help more people. Uh, too many people are not, are being cut out right now. We know that's clear. Exactly. Well, we're so grateful to have your help. Again, we were honored. Uh, we were so thrilled to be able to honor you as a healthcare champion. We look forward to working with you closely in the legislature. And uh, uh, here we go. So thanks again for being with us today. Thank you, Cindy. If I can just make one last pitch again, I know we're working on this, all, all this together. I also would ask for your support to save the adult dental Medicaid benefit, to not let our COFA communities be cut off from healthcare and dental, and um, to uh, make sure that we're working on equity for healthcare and education uh, broadband in our digital equity efforts. And I think Pat's dog is all for that. So let's do it. Yep. All right, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Again, uh, we're all grateful to have your support and uh, we'll continue moving forward on progress.